about 20 something percentage of the population is projectors. Yep. And their strategy is waiting for an invitation and or being recognized. Waiting for the recognition, yeah, waiting to feel recognized, that sense of an inviting feeling that the other's energy is attuned to an inventory, you know, to invitational way. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, no good. They're not being recognized. Mm -hmm. And their themes are success and bitterness. Mm -hmm. So the fun part, where do they get their name from? So will they get their name from their aura, which we talked about before, the energy body that everybody has? It is being projected upon others so projector and we already talked a little bit about this they're not self theme of bitterness can so, i talk about that aura a little bit yes go ahead okay the aura is real important because so everyone's got a different one you already know your aura is an impactor in the world it helps move resistance out of the way um we already know the generator's aura is open and enveloping it can't discern if anything is within eight feet of it, it can fall into the generator aura and the generator has no, it just envelops everything. Projector, picture you're standing behind the projector. It would look like a little cone of an aura coming out and focusing in on the being that they're looking at, that they're sort of projecting upon, that they're with at that time. And so the projector aura penetrates the other. That's half of the guidance. Projectors are here to guide humanity. They're here to guide humanity by being in our aura and helping to guide things generally and, and everything in between. Um, a lot of times it's not even mental what they're here to do as guidance, but that aura penetrates others. And at the same time, projectors do need to become aware that their aura penetrates others because not every, because sometimes it's not fully like someone is unwanted sometimes. Not the person is unwanted, but sometimes what they're after becomes less wanted because it's invasive. It's guiding the other. And, uh, you know, it's, it goes right in. It penetrates us right into our G center. So they, they need to know that. You were moving on to the next thing? Yeah. <laughs> That's this party train going. Uh, so bitterness is, you know, activated as they're not self theme. And that happens when they are <clears throat> focusing on the wrong people or they're not being fully recognized. And being in that cycle eventually leads to some sort of bitterness or exhaustion and um, also not following your strategy and authority. That will also lead to not only bitterness about other people, but life in general. And a excellent example of this is my father is a projector and he, basically was bitter about every person and aspect of life. It was really, really like just bitter curmudgeon energy. <laughs> like I've never felt from anyone before. So I have firsthand experienced what happens when a projector is not living in their strategy and following their authority. It is not a pleasant sight to be <laughs> around at all. Well, it's, it's, it happens to everyone. Same thing when we're frustrated or you're angry or the emotional wave is uh, going up and down. Um, bitterness and success. Bitterness is just bitterness. It's, it's a, it's a, it can seethe. It can, um, it, it, there's a type of agitation to it. It's, there's, it, there's a resentfulness in it. It's, it, it builds up over time. It's a chemistry. The important part is it's a chemistry and bitterness really does describe it. On the other side, success, lots of things describe that. Success, victory, feeling a sense of accomplishment, having done a thing that you that you were trying to master, the sense of, of moving towards mastery of any one thing, from small mundane things to great big things and everything in between, all of these things feel like feel successful. Successful interactions with the others feel successful. As soon as any of these things aren't really working, that's when bitterness comes in. And both of them are chemistry. The success, the bitterness, they're not a mental construct. That's one of the things we're going to go into with our guest tonight. And I'm wicked excited about that. Yep, moving on. <laughs> so the strategy is, of course, 
it, before anyone can recognize you, I mean, this kind of goes for anybody, I guess, but projectors specifically, it, you need to start seeing that in yourself, you know, whatever it may be. It's like, you know what, I'm great at doing X, Y, Z thing. And I know I'm great. And it's only a matter of time when everyone else is going to be start seeing that too. And the next part is probably one of the most difficult things I think about being a projector is waiting for that invitation. And this is especially important for really, really big decisions like, you know, a career change, being invited into a relationship, you know, selecting a home. And I also have a funny story here, which uh, makes me laugh. So a very good friend of mine, she married a projector and she was like, you know, he never had a relationship where it wasn't the woman inviting him in and just saying, do you want to be in a relationship with me? Yep. <laughs> and, and she thought it's ridiculous and being a pansy and X, Y, Z thing. But in my head, you know, being a human design junkie, I'm like, oh, the homeboy is living his design. He's the living his design. Like, That's exactly. exactly how it's supposed to be rolling. Now He's think about it. Wrong. If the other person um, who thought that that was strange or odd goes ahead and makes that projector feel stupid for that and they continue that, that person's not right for them. That person's so not right for them. And you know what? We found out early on instead of a year and a half or two later, right? Because that's what would have happened as soon as they were got, got together together, essentially. Oh, they was... married and they're expecting a second. And one of the other oh, things- Oh, noticed... oh, this is good. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, it, it gets juicier. One of the other things I've noticed in their relationship, she's a manifester, by the way. She's she's a three five emotional manifester. She gets so annoyed at him for being lazy and slow. She's like, I can't believe how slow he is when the kid bolts. I can't believe every time he needs to watch the kid on his own, he goes to his parents' house and pawns off the responsibility to his parents to watch our kid instead of like him just staying home and alone. And in my head, I'm like, the dude's efficient. Yeah. <laughs> efficient. He was like, if you can get help, why not take it? But I don't see that's, anything with it. That's too funny. Um, that's something in his design, I assume. Um, that's, I'd have to see his design, but that sounds funny. I would love to look at those two together. Bottom line is this strategy of waiting for the invitation is so important because it helps tune the person into their their the chemistry. Notice we keep saying chemistry, chemistry, and, and, and we're going to keep driving it home because I'm starting to realize after all my years of reading, I have realized that people's awareness that their chemistry is telling them what's true. And it's also an awareness. The chemistry in our body is its own separate, unique, our body's awareness, its consciousness. It want, it literally, if it could speak, it would say, hey, dude, I want you to go in the right direction. I want you to make all the right decisions. I'm gonna give you all the energy you need. I got a ton of stuff to say. I'll never stop talking, blah, blah, blah. That's what it would say if it could speak, but it can't. So it gives us its chemistry, which is just as complicated. And we'll keep going into that as we talk through this. The strategy of waiting for the invitation lets the projector know that when they feel recognized, that's a chemical feeling inside of them. It feels good. It does release a certain amount of energy to do whatever that is. And as they start to get bitter, they start to not have energy to do whatever or be in whatever relationship or have whatever thing. Um, and it's coincident with the sensation of getting angry and bitter. So these are both chemistries telling you, one tells you, the second one tells you you're going in the wrong direction. So wicked important there. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, we just did strategy. So cool. yeah, and yeah. Not so self -theme. It, it, not self theme. We already did that. So we're on to obstacles, right? What are some things that projectors have to deal with? Of course, uh, <clears throat> waiting and recognition kind of go hand in hand because you're like, right. I'm waiting to be recognized, and I need that recognition. But before that can happen, you can fall into the trap of hero syndrome or savior complex let me help and do all the things until someone notices me and that that's, is a thing yeah and it's especially difficult as you know a non-sacral being your energy is ebbing and flowing so if you're like give 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 
you are running on empty. All yeses and noes as a projector becomes uniquely aware of their strategy that dials them into the genetic truth operating their way through this life. It starts to truly take them and put them on the right track of not allowing that to happen or when it does seeing it and curtailing it quickly, you know, or at least seeing it. That's so important. So absolutely trying to do so much saying yes when it's not really yes. These are all things waiting is hard. It's hard for all of us, actually. You're the only one that doesn't have to wait, and you still have a hard time with it. For us, it's um, ah, waiting yeah, is- I have to wait for the rest cycle to be over. That's still waiting. Yeah, <laughs> yep. and, you ha and you have to wait for the rest of the generators and projectors. So you're waiting for us, too, at plenty of times. You're waiting for all kinds of things, Melana. And all of us are waiting <laughs> just yep. for different things. So we might as well start to see waiting as an active state of enlightened awareness. An active state of awareness is waiting. The dog does not feel bored when he's waiting by the window to bark at another dog. That's not bored. That's waiting. <laughs> One is active, and the other is something we just invented and called bored when we don't, you know, that's not really what it is you know stuff like that and then the rest cycle because all the non-sacral beings have to find their rest cycle which will always include for projectors and manifestors and reflectors um up to and including naps during the day down times certainly a regular bedtime and getting into bed 15 to 20 minutes before you plan to nod off or go to sleep just to relax read a book get, let a little music go by something something to get horizontal and start the relaxation process, fall asleep, get your full seven to eight or nine hours, whatever you can get. And you have to do it or else you'll start to go wrong. Everything will start to feel harder and more arduous. And that's why sleep is half the battle for you guys. Well, it's for us things... two generators, just so you know, us generators, we're not immune. We have it too. It's just that it works differently. You know, when we get mm -hmm. crappy sleep, it's just, it, it does, it works totally differently. And we get just this, it's, anyways, it's just as bad, but you guys have this one particular way, rest, physical rest in between because the sacral motor is not burning consistently for you as it does for the generator. So what I was going to say? to go into the embracing receiving assistance. Like I gave the example of my friend's husband. I'm like, that's great. Ask for more help. You right. don't have to do it all yourself. Absolutely not. I mean, this, this applies to anyone, but more so, you know, focusing on projectors today. It's like, yeah, it, it, you know, we're not here to be a lonely island trying to make it all happen ourselves. There's nothing wrong with, you know, having a community or having friends and family help out whenever you need it. And last point is again, recognize yourself. And that is more important than anything else. Well, I, I would like to add one last thing to it is this recognition that as the projector is sort of going through their way that they start to see sometimes when they were little, they weren't paid attention to quite as much and that too leads feels like an obstacle because then they try to sort of overcompensate like you were saying later in life potentially and i guess that was just a nuance but that is definitely a thing it, it, it's the wallflower syndrome they'll spend moments in their life where they feel like they're so not recognized it feels like a wallflower meanwhile all the generators are acting like it's a rave and you know bouncing off walls or doing whatever or just you know buzzing in their own little trip with their own problems too it's just that the wallflower syndrome because the projector seems like the non-energy type at times when all the other energy types are there they sort of fall back because there's too much fatigue people fatigue we'll call it it's people oh. fatigue mastery right what are they here to master so i like to look at them as directors in the movie called life they're the ones who are like let's shoot me a little bit this way let's put that tree mm -hmm. a little bit closer to us and that's gonna you know make everything work real nice so they do great helping projects they help a great team so many different directions or just coaching people one-on-one -on -one, um so many different things but they they obviously shine when they pick a thing and they love it so for example my brother his thing was forex trading once he found that thing he loves, he lasered in on it and he be just self-taught, became really, really good at it. Now he needs to get to the step of 
guiding others to also be able to do it. But again, and it speaks to that mastery generally. So projectors are very much here to master systems. And um, so every type has an existential question, uh, an actual question with a question mark baked into what they're sort of always looking at. For the projector, it's not who am I, but for the projector, it's who are you? Who are you? What are you? Who are you? And that's part of how, and that goes with their aura that penetrates in on the other and their best one at a time. Mastery of the other one at a time. Mastery of a system that works in conjunction with others one at a time. So it's mastery, mastery, mastery all over the place, little ones and big ones. Generator gets called into a thing and wants to do the thing. They do one thing and they pound away at it, potentially their whole life. Doesn't mean a projector doesn't have one thing they keep their whole life. They're always eyeballing and looking to recognize what else do they care to master. Generators just like, don't give me another thing to master. Don't give me, you know, I'll tell you when I want it. I can't tell. They don't know. They have to wait and respond. Projectors are more sophisticated. They recognize it. And suddenly they start doing the thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's all kinds of mastery, whatever it is, from little computer stuff, big stuff writing master mastering families mastering partnerships big deal to them but all which of like rolls us into our next point right they're like natural students right it's like let me learn about like you said what is it like to be in this relationship or is it like to master xyz skill and then once yep. mastered it they can be the person to guide that person because it's like i extensively looked into this thing and now i can help you do the thing better right 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 exactly i'm looking for my cat <laughs> that ends up well he was just over here by me i did knock him off the table and i hope he's not mad at me um not my fault really it was a knee-jerk reaction this role that they play with others that has become so important it becomes wicked important for the projector to recognize their aura penetrating the other is in fact guiding them. And if they're not careful, never mind, never mind not careful, aspects of it are no different than the, um, the, than the character at the end of the strings because of that directing, but it's not literal. You can't take that as a translation, but it has plenty of similarities to that. So their role is to choose very carefully that they are in fact, um, it sounds strange penetrating the right other that they're, that they're in the, that they're in the yeah that they're in the aura of the right other you know it, well because i had to say i mean i don't know that's the thing um careful over there i know it's like um, projector memes yeah yeah high projector penetrate me no so the, the, that's the doing a direction thing that's funny as hell um in that directing with their penetrating aura that physically goes into the other and it's focused it's a focused thing almost like a laser beam going into the other that that's a big deal why should they just give that away willy-nilly i'm not staying in your aura you, you i can't tell that this is any good for me mm. they have every right to is it me 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 i believe our guest is a two four is she not profile five two five Five double okay. projection field, yeah, yeah. But, anyways, that second line is a you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It doesn't want to know, it's self absorbed. It's just like me, I'm a two person in, in my profile, and, and you know, I don't want I don't necessarily want to know. I'm, I'm busy with my own little trip, uh, you know. So, why let why put yourself in all that greatness, even in the aura of the other, if they don't want it? Mm -hmm. And you can tell if they want it because your big, keen skill is recognition. That recognition isn't waiting to be recognized only. It's exactly the yang, the yin and yang of that. It's the recognizing. So you can tell right away when you're a projector. Allow it. Allow that observation to become truth in the now and let it make your decision and when you're a projector, at least cursorily, so you can start to see that this is true. This is your thing. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. And it takes us into our last point of special traits. Um, you're not here to grind away, right? You're not supposed to be energetically keeping up, go at your own pace. And this is really exciting. Um, projectors are, they come in the most varieties when it comes to their authority variations. So 
that's really fun uh, four different types um and back in the olden days leadership positions were for manifestors and projectors were at the bottom but now that is reversing manifestors are no longer supposed to be in that position and it is now being shifted over to projectors so that's really cool if danny have anything to add oh uh, yeah totally and this shift is just sort of an organic thing it's not that a, a manifestor will never lead or a projector will never follow um that they will it's just the natural tendency of thing because ever since we shifted into this nine centered form um that penetration field is directing humanity picture this i i have a i have a, a pitchfork into you okay moana you're gonna go in the direction that 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 the pitchfork wants to go essentially or it's going to direct you to move in a direction it's like there's a skewer going through you penetrating you and it suddenly puts you on a direction whether you wanted it or not mm. so again they don't have to do anything say anything they don't have to be a friend the projector is offering and giving that guidance and directing and helping to literally to make a direction standing in a grocery line to everyone around and the thing is we're in a whole network because no matter where you are uh, uh there's always a couple of projectors so it's always covering the whole field lots of coverage we'll call it mm -hmm. you know and and it's providing a form of direction that manifestors now have to try and become a boss and and control and what you know impact only no this is this is the direction of the other where the other is actually taking part in the direction not i'm the manifestor i'm the boss potentially and i'll get angry if you don't do what i say that's the old way well that's the i old still way. fall into that tendency but yes yeah, not really but different but anyway so so that's important for them to know that's yeah funny. we say some funny things moana i know that's the whole point of us being alive is we say funny things at least they we do. think we're funny they sit <laughs> at the top of the natural leadership hierarchy they truly do and again they don't have to be el presidente to simply be in the guidance business throughout mm -hmm. all of wherever that hierarchy might be mm -hmm. and we nine centered human beings aren't all that into super duper hierarchy anyways nobody really likes it so so but it's it but there still is a form of a hierarchy there always will be different uh -huh. hierarchies of different types and they're always in the thick in the mix of that mm -hmm. yep one of, one of the things that i i kind of went over already is they're excellent at managing energy and it's not yep. just their own personal energy it's other people's energy which is actually it's almost never their personal energy at first until we make them rest properly mm -hmm. but it still is the other Right. So yeah. this is why they're I like to look at them as hawks that just hang out on the side of the highway. They have a lay of the land and able to see things and then able to tweak things like no other. They just have naturally have that ability. It's true. It's true. The raven, it's they're good. And and having a penetrating aura does technically, you know, they're on the hunt for the right things to feel successful at. Mm -hmm. as they should be unlike a generator generator if you put a generator truly on the hunt for a thing they're going to go astray unless that hunt is in response to something like a request to physically go hunting then they can hunt you know mm -hmm. but but short of that nope dumb generators so <laughs> right. <laughs> and that brings us to the, the last point, right? They're great at organizing others, uh, networking, managing a team, and all the things. And as long as it's right for them. As long course. as it's right for them. Because, again, it's not really even about managing managing others. It's about that the management of a, the human species, if you're, you know, 500,000 miles away looking in at the whole blob of humanity is being directed by the penetrating aura of the projector impersonally as well as personally so you may not feel like leading or being part of anything i mean i don't know what our guest is going to do if she's a two five then she spends part of her time hiding and the other part of her time sometimes hiding and so um you know from one from one projection field one from another and it's not hiding it's just being a hermit at times or wanting to be and running into fatigue when you can't and so she may not want to really guide or do anything but the thing that she finds she likes to do is a mastery of a certain skill set that helps other teams that are organized to lead whole companies do and suddenly 
she's the master of that. Well, what do you do? Well, I publish a thing that they need to see once a month because it's wicked important and I love it. It's got all these little aspects and I get it just right and I nail it. It has nothing to do with organizing anyone. It has nothing to do with helping to manage any one person, but it's an important component of another management team that does do those things. So it doesn't matter where it is. As long yeah. as they're gaining mastery and being recognized for their stuff, then their strategy and authority will tell them the rest, that which is true for them. Beautiful.